Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I am showing you guys how I turned my daughter's free t-shirt that she got into an event <laughs> into something that actually fits her well. I had many requests for this. I did the same thing at the same event that I was with my daughter. I um, did the same thing to my own t-shirt and um, showed it on the Me Made May and had many requests for how I did that. Um, apparently I'm not alone on the graphic t-shirts and how to make them look uh, not as boxy. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I'm gonna start off with a few tips here. Now, when this is really better at like going forward. Like when you're at an event, um, you know, if you volunteered at something or whatever and you get the free t-shirt, um, or if you're required to wear the t-shirt to the event because you're a volunteer or whatever, um, what I do is I request the largest size they have available. So in this instance, it was a men's 2XL. Now, I realize that um, a lot of you probably have shirts that you wanna do this to that you already have in your wardrobe, which is a little trickier if you have one that technically fits you. Um, my big beef with these kind of shirts is that the necklines are super, super high, and then they hang off my boobs. A lot of times there's not a ton of stretch in these fabrics, and um, uh, like no recovery. So it's not like sewing with like a, you know, wearing a cotton spandex jersey. There may be some spandex in these. Let's see. No, this is just 50% cotton, 50% polyester. But you know, they have some give, but you know, mechanical give because they are knitted, but you know, they're not great. And so they hang off your boobs weird. Sometimes they fit my arms, they hit at unattractive areas on my boobs. Yeah, I just don't like them. So when you are working with one where um, maybe you really need one bigger than your body is what I'm trying to say. Now, if you've bought it, if you have shirts, yeah, a couple people are like, oh my gosh, I've lost a lot of weight and I'd love to make my t-shirts fit me a little bit better. You can still do this, um, you know, with this. You may just have a little bit less to work with. Um, it's surprising, even if you're making, sizing down quite a few sizes from where you start, how little wiggle room you have. <laughs> So yeah, just keep that in mind. I also had some requests for how to lower that neckline if you wanted to. And while that's not impossible, um, you do have to have a different fabric to make your neckband. You're not gonna be able to use the self fabric to make the neckband because there's just not usually stretch enough to do that. Um, and the neckband that's there is gonna be too short. So, you know, if you're trying to scoop it out. So that's another reason why I suggest getting, or getting the biggest shirt possible because the neckline is gonna be a lot more open because it's a much bigger shirt. So, um, it's not, I mean, it's not gonna be like a scoop neck, but it is gonna fit much lower. So this will fit her neck much lower. This is my daughter's shirt. Whereas a shirt for her would have had a much higher and smaller um, neckline. Cause this is a 2XL and she is like a size two. So <laughs> we've got a lot to work with. Um, anyway, um, that's kind of my uh, suggestions. So yes, you can adjust the neckline and it really is just, you know, I'll show you kind of what you would wanna do if you were doing that, but you will need a, fa a separate fabric to make yourself a neckband um, because yeah, you're not gonna be able to use any of this. So I hope that makes sense. But that's also the plus of getting the biggest shirt they have um, because you will have a lowered neckline by doing that. Um, what else? Okay, so this is actually really, really quick. I'm gonna be using the Closet Core Patterns, uh, their free pattern, which is the core t-shirt. And the reason for this is that this pattern, you don't have to have a lot of stretch for this pattern, um, which makes this perfect. So, you know, like for instance, the Cashmere at Concord t-shirt is has a lot of negative ease in it, and it's meant for a fabric that has a certain percentage of stretch. The core um, t-shirt, you can have very minimal stretch and you don't have to have great recovery because it's a looser shirt, but it's still kind of fitted through the bust. With mine, I actually did a full bust adjustment and added a dart. I do, however, and I'll pop it up here, have a video for how to do a dartless FBA. So if you wanted to, to put in a full bust adjustment into this pattern but keep it dartless, you could do one of these three uh, techniques as well. Um, I'm actually not gonna do a full bust adjustment on this for my daughter, I'm just gonna make it right as is. So, because I'm making the size for her upper bust, but there's so much ease in the, in the full bust uh, measurements, like 37 inches, and her full bust is 34 and a half. 
so I have to think about that for a second. So, um, so she'll have plenty of these through there. Um, so I think we're going to be fine. I'm not going to mess with a full bust adjustment on this one for her. She's usually like right on the line. <laughs> um, anyway, but you can do that. And again, you can check that video for that. So yeah, going to be using the front and the back of the core t-shirt pattern. We're making the cropped version, um, for her and, um, I'm not going to lengthen it because she likes her stuff cropped. Um, I did lengthen, did I lengthen mine? Hmm. I think I might have lengthened mine an inch just to make sure that I had enough <laughs> of that extra room, even though I have a short torso. So, you know, you can do that. Uh, making her a size four, actually, because she has a 31 inch upper bust and a 34 and a half inch full bust. So I picked the size for the 31 upper bust. And again, there's 37 inches of ease for that upper bust measurement. So we should be fine. Um, and yeah, so front, back, and I need the sleeve and that's it. Um, we don't need any of the other pieces because we're actually not even going to mess with the neckline. Okay, so let's go over to the cutting table. I'll show you how to cut this out. It's a little different um, than you would cut out a normal pattern and then we'll get to sewing. It's a pretty quick process. Okay, let's get this shirt altered. This really is a pretty fast process. Um, but yeah, we're going to cut up the original shirt first and then here I've got my Closet Core Patterns Core T-shirt front back and the short sleeve. Okay. So the only three pattern pieces that we need. All right. <clears throat> when it comes to these t-shirts, these are knitted in the round. And so a lot of times, most of the time they do not have, um, side seams. So what we are going to do is create a side seam. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just wanting, um, to lay things out. I know I'm out of frame here a little bit on the sleeve, but just kind of smooth things out. and lay them out as flat as possible. Um, I'm just looking to do this on one side, really. Okay, so once everything feels nice and smooth, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut from the hem, maybe. What am I stuck on? There we go. And this is one of those, you know, close enough is good enough. Just gonna cut right along that quote unquote side seam. But I'm only gonna take this up to the armpit. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side real quick. The other thing, you know, you don't need to be too precious about this because um, a lot of times these shirts are off grain anyway. <laughs> so our goal with this is really to make things better not perfect. Now, if you do have a t-shirt with a side seam, you can actually turn it inside out and just cut off the surged edge. And I'll show you, it's exactly how we're going to do the, um, the sleeves here. Okay. So now I've cut up to the, um, underarm there. So now I'm going to turn things inside out. And I'm just going to cut off the seam allowance, basically. I'm just going to go very carefully all around and you want to be careful. You don't want to cut off too much because you'd be surprised how much of this you actually need. 
We're going to leave the hem of the sleeve alone. That's actually going to stay. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You just, you want to just cut off as little as possible. Because you have to remember um, our pattern pieces still have seam allowances on them. All the way around. I'm just going to show you this on one sleeve. Obviously, it's the same on the other. Now the sleeve should come off and then I'm just going to really quickly cut off the underarm seam. Like so. So there we've got one sleeve off. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'll meet you right back here and we'll cut out our bodice. Okay, so then you should have um, two sleeves that we're going to set aside for right now that are completely like cut open and ready to go. So um, I'm actually going to put these right sides together. Make sure you have them right sides together so those hems are, or wrong side together, but just make sure they're mirrored because <laughs> that's going to come in very important later. All right, so there we have that. So I'm just going to set those aside. Now with our body pieces, I have gone ahead and I have marked in my seam allowance here because we are going to overlap these. We want that line to kind of overlap. You can either tape that in place or just put a washer or something um, to hold that down. But that's, I've marked that in. So now what I'm gonna do is we've got like this weird poncho, <laughs> like so. So I'm just going to fold this in half and I'm gonna match my shoulder seams and you can pin that if that helps you oops that's not quite a part there And then once we've matched those, now these may not match perfectly along your sides because keeping in mind we were, we were just really um, winging it there, creating a side seam. So we're just gonna kind of do the best that we can. This is the back. I think I've gone out of frame, but that's okay because we're going to lose a lot of the bottom of this shirt anyway. Just wanting to smooth it out. All right. So there we have our back. I'm actually going to do this in two, two swaps here. Just going to in these at the shoulder. Keep those laying on top of one another, but be careful that you don't cut into those. <laughs> okay, so this is our back. I'm just going to take my back piece and I'm lining it up kind of with this, um, the neckline, but not the neckline complete edge, just right here at the sewn edge. I mean, you could get technical. It's not gonna match perfectly because they're two different patterns. What I'm really concerned with is that my line, my seam allowance line here, lines up with the seam of the um, shoulder. The neckline may differ, that's okay. So I'm just gonna make sure that that lines up well. Okay, 
and now we're just going to cut it out. You want to make sure, I mean, I cut, I mean, look at all this that I cut off and you can use that as actually cleaning cloths. That'd be great for cleaning cloths. And now we're going to go here and up here to the shoulder. And this is where I'm going to stop because we're just going to continue on to the front here in just a second. Let me get my scissors out real quick though. And I'm going to clip my notches. I'm really only going to mess with the notches that are there at the armhole. And now I'm going to lay this out. And it will lay out kind of weird, like at an angle. That's normal. And I'm assuming I'm out of frame right now <laughs> here, but, but that's okay. Cause again, we're going to cut a lot of those off. Hold on. Let me smooth this out. to take my front and again I'm most concerned about matching that up my shoulder it's a little off up here um, but I'm really more interested in it matching up here at this outside because this shoulder seam had a different slope to it than the one I'm using here which is fine, but I really want this to line up to the center fold line as much as possible. And then I want the outside of my seam lines to match up. That's what's really important. So it's kind of wonky here. It's just a different neckline and that's okay. All right, so I'm just switching over my washers there. And now I'm gonna go back to where I stopped cutting here at my shoulder or at my um, armhole and just continue it on. Sorry, I think I go out of frame here. I'm just cutting along and the bottom. Okay, so again, pull all that away. Those are good cleaning cloth scraps. And then I'm just gonna mark my armhole. My armhole notch, okay. So then when we take our pattern pieces away, we've got this. Okay, take that pin out now. So basically we already have our shoulder seam sewn for us and our neckband put in. Great. <laughs> and I wanna make sure I've got my notches. Yes, okay. So now I'm just gonna set this aside and we're gonna cut out our sleeves. So our sleeves, I've got these right sides together. You can put them wrong sides together, wrong, wrong sides together as well. So you see, you don't have a lot, a ton of like depth that we're working with here, but I want you to keep in mind, we've got the hem already. So I want to line up this with, um, you know, you see on your pattern piece where it kind of dips in, this is the hem right here. So actually I want to mark, make that dip. I actually accidentally cut into that right there. Hold on. That's not, I want that hem to line up really well together. I just only cut that when I was cutting into the, okay. So I'm just marking, matching that up. You can draw that in if you want, but I'm really just matching that up to that dip. See, it barely fits on there. And then I'm just gonna throw my washers down. Do a quick zoop. Oops. So we already have our hems done. And then I'm just gonna mark my notches. 
And the reason we want to make sure that these were either both uh, right side facing or wrong side facing is that we want two mirror sleeves. We need a right sleeve and a left sleeve. Okay, and then we've got that. Okay, so now I'm going to go over, um, I'm going to be using my serger for the next steps, although um, you can definitely do this with a sewing machine as well. You don't have to do it with a serger, but I am going to do all of the rest of this on the serger. And I think, I think I might actually do the hem of this with my sewing machine um, instead of the cover stitch, but I might change my mind. We'll see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to meet you at the sewing machine or the serger now. Okay, so I've got my shirt here. Obviously, the um, shoulders and the neck band have already been done. And I've got it right side, and I have pinned, sorry, get it out of the camera there, pinned my sleeve um, right side, and I only pinned the edge, the notch, the shoulder, other notch, and the other edge. Um, I've got it, my sleeve pinned to my shirt, and it, my shirt's flat. I've not done any side seams. So much easier to put this in this way. <laughs> Okay, so I've got everything pinned in, and now I'm just going to serge this. So um, I like to serge, sorry, I've got a new tripod here. I'm trying not to, it's not as heavy as my old one. Okay, um, I'm going to be putting my, this is the sleeve against the feed dogs. It just helps pull that in. And if you're using a serger, pins are such a big no-no for sergers. <laughs> Someone's going to say, tell me to use the clips. And I know, I just haven't. I've, I've just not made the plunge there. So um, the seam allowance on this is three eighths of an inch. And I know that my serger, um, because your serge seam is typically a quarter of an inch wide, if I line up my edge of my fabric with uh, this plate right here, that that will cut off an eighth of an inch. So that is my three eighths of an inch seam allowance. But really, with a serger, you want to measure from your farthest left needle to the edge and that will tell you, um, you know, your, your seam allowance. If you wanna put tape or something, I know that can be kinda hard. Although I do have markings right up here that will tell me, um, you know, I, I line up my raw edge at this line if I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance and so on. Okay. Although washi tape or like painter's tape or something like that is also masking tape is great for that sort of thing as well. So I also need to change the needles on my serger. They're making the thumping noise. <laughs> Another trick, I'm using white thread really just because I can't be bothered to change my thread on my serger right now, but also um, so you guys can see. But a trick that I like to use is if you thread your furthest left needle with the color um, that matches your project, that's the um, seam that if it, any stress is put on the seam, that's the line that will show. So um, that's a way so you don't have to buy four of every color when you're searching. You just can use the one. All right. Um, I should have also said ooh, that I'm clearing my bobbins. Um, if you did decide to put darts into your bodice, you did need, you needed to have sewn those before you did your sleeves. I mean, I guess you could still go back and do it, but that would be easiest. Okay. So now we have our sleeves that are in just, everything's kind of put together here, but the side seams haven't been done. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this right sides together and I'm going to serge um, the whole length of the side seam. So from the hem of the shirt through to the hem of the sleeve. Now, if you're using a sewing machine, you can definitely do this on the sewing machine. Um, I would use a stretch stitch. So that's like a, a it looks like a lightning bolt on your sewing machine or um, a zigzag that's like a 2.5 length and a one width. And then you could actually, you could leave the edges raw. You don't have to finish these off um, because it won't ravel. But if you wanted to finish them off, you could finish it off with a wider zigzag stitch or the faux overlock stitch on your machine. Um, you know, there's options. Or you could pink it if you wanted. All right, so now I'm just starting at the hem of the t-shirt and we're gonna go up the side seam. I don't have any pins at all on it for this one. 
I just want to make sure I always start the hem of the shirt because I want my um, the seam allowances of my sleeves to go towards the sleeve. Personal preference. And then I just want to make sure that my finished hems here are all lined up. And I'm going to show you, if you are using a serger, how we're going to finish that off. All right. So I want to leave a nice long tail here at this end. Now for at the hem of the shirt, because we will be hemming that, I'm just going to cut that off, that thread tail off at the, where, the edge. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to tie this off. So you kind of, you can kind of make it skinny a little bit. And I'm just going to make a loop, nice wide loop. And then I use a darning needle and, or what else is this called? Uh, embroidery needle maybe. Um, anyway, I put that in the loop. So then when I'm pulling this taut, you can make that knot really snug up to where you ended. Okay, so now we've tied that off, tied that knot. Now I'm going to thread this tail onto this needle, maybe. Okay, and then I'm just going to feed it back through that seam we just searched. About, I don't know, inch, inch and a half. And then pull that through. And then once that's done, I can clip it close to the edge. And there you go. So when that is worn, you won't even notice. Now you could, if you wanted to, um, once we've got the colored thread onto the sewing machine, kind of sew across that a little bit just to keep it one way or the other, but you're pretty good to go. So now we can just go and press our seam allowances to the back. And um, I'm gonna do the other side real quick and then I will meet you back here. All right, so now all we have to do is hem, folks. So we've sewn up our side seams. Um, we've done the little trick with both of the sleeves. And then I've pressed up my um, hem allowance. Now I have surged my hem allowance just for looks. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, but I'm actually going to sew it on the sewing machine with regular thread, straight stitch, because this hem does not need to stretch at all. So it's boxy enough and um, the fabric really doesn't have stretch. So um, yeah, you might be fine just doing a regular, you know, you have to do a twin needle or a zigzag stitch or a cover stitch. You can just do a, a regular old stitch, um, like if you were doing a woven. So just a little, little tip there. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I've got my machine set at 3.5 millimeter stitch. A little fuzzy there. And I can feel, the other reason I like to surge it is I can feel it through the um, machine or through the, the top layer. So I can pretty easily just follow right along that edge and keep everything nice and um, nice and even. I've got some skip stitches. What is happening here? Okay, we may be fine. Okay, I think we're good now. sure what happened there where I started. <laughs> it obviously was not picking up the bobbin thread. But then it decided to do that. So. Okay.
Oh, right. There we go. Just making sure that that all took. I think we're good. Okay. And there you have it. We have now turned our gigantic shirt into a shirt that she will actually wear. Um, so I will now pop some footage of her in the newly done shirt. Um, also, this pattern also comes with a longer version. You don't have to do the crop version of this pattern. Um, and it's a free pattern. So I go take a look. Um, I will have a link to it down in the description box below. Other than that, let me know if you have any questions and, uh, yeah, I will answer those as soon as I can. All right, guys, hope this was helpful. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.